Hello everybody, my name is Derek Nicholas. You are currently in Clayton, North Carolina at my home studio, AKA the garage, where the magic goes down, the creativity spawns, and the ideas come to life. I hope you enjoy. So what we got going on right here is my home garage art studio. Everything from floor to ceiling to walls covered in paint because when I'm in the zone, I know no other way to do it. But what I find is that the art typically reflects the setting. I would say that this is really a reflection of how my mind works. It's sporadic, it's spontaneous. However, it's colorful, it's bright. It has texture, it has dynamics, it has creativity to it. You can see how when I get into this space, I live in it. The benefit that I found having a home studio is my kids. They can see me be creative. So I've noticed my daughter start to take a liking to color. I've seen my son start to articulate, Daddy, your art looks good. Hey, I want to try that. Hey, I want to use my hands to paint. And I think, right, as a parent raising kids, that that's something that I can sort of instill in them early to let it manifest in whatever they become, right? Doctors, entertainers, whatever they want to do, just knowing that they got to see their father do something he was passionate about, something he loves. So that's what I enjoy. Good old batch of Henry's ready set. Let me tell you a life hack that I found that a lot of artists have put me up on, man. They sell this or something like this in Michael's, but because it's categorized as art, this bucket will cost you $191. You go to Ace Hardware, seven bucks. Does the same thing. This is a good way to test it. So let's see. I want to cover all of this. And really just get in here and just start laying it down. You know, texture is something I've been getting more into lately. Been attempting to see how it works, how it looks, how it feels. From an artistic standpoint, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't quite know if I figured it out yet, but some of this art, man, is just trial and error. I think I would have been mad if this was a brand new canvas and what I'm about to try didn't work out because then I just wasted a canvas. I'm almost imagining like a ridge that's just gonna start from one side of the painting to the other. And let's see what happens. You know what I find consistent in a lot of artists is that none of us feel as confident or secure in the art we do as people would seem. I've met folks who've created astounding murals for entire cities. Things that anybody on the street would look at and say, oh, clearly this person not only is confident, but is successful. And I think publicly, they are. But when you get them in that private, sort of safe space, the consistent sentiment that I think connects all of us, we all suffer from this, what do they call it? Imposter syndrome. And then we can fall mentally into a space where you start to feel like, am I talented? Am I an artist? Do I really have a skill? Is this by accident? Now, I'm not saying we all live there or we all stay there, but they'll tell you, right? Each piece, almost, they run through the gamut of emotions. I think what really sort of starts to speak to who you are as an artist versus maybe who you are not are those of us who always have found constantly a way to keep going. <laughs> I think hip hop and art align so much because they're both sort of tools used from original pieces of other things melded together to make this beautiful new thing. So anybody who knows me will tell you this. What changed my life is when I saw Enter the 36 Chambers album cover and then I delved deeper into Liquid Swords and I saw the artwork that was being utilized to promote Wu-Tang Clan, that in the artwork of early outcasts, AT Aliens. And I was seeing stuff that I couldn't find in the comic. I, could, I was seeing stuff that y'all didn't see on TV and the people in it looked like me. So as dope as Spider-Man was, Big Boy with the braids on AT Aliens doing the, the action pose was really impacting me a little bit more. And watching how these black urban figures were in hoodies, but they had swords and they were doing action. I said, wait a minute, hold on. So we, meaning black people, meaning our culture, can use this art form and make stuff that we want. Because at that point, mind you, let's be honest, in the 80s, commercially, it wasn't a lot of us being represented. Not, not an issue, but that's all I knew. So my 
sort of pinnacle of what I thought art can be was Stan Lee. So those were probably the two biggest pivotal art, hip hop related items that started to divert my attention away from trying to fit the status quo and really start to find my own unique voice and style. I really became sort of this amalgamation of technology, music, and art. Experimentation, I believe, is the crux of art. There's no style that never came out of somebody saying like, you know what, <laughs> right? Like, that's the basis of all fashion, all style, is somebody saying, you know what, I see what y'all doing, but let me try it this way. Or hey, I see that thing, y'all ever try to use it like this? And again, it doesn't always, it doesn't always work, right? I, I believe a lot of the things that become sort of ubiquitous or become uh, sort of the foundation of a lot of the things we call a style, like whatever style that is, whatever art form that is, had to start somewhere by somebody throwing away a lot of other stuff that was similar to it before landing on something that they finally felt comfortable with. Again, experimentation. You come out on days like this and roll the dice, see what you get. This is my therapy. This is my existence. I'm making this art because it makes me feel good. It's how I stay stable throughout my life and all the challenges that I have that I rise throughout it. Anybody who ever is creative will always find a way to exist and evolve and even progress when it comes to physical medium.